this couple have bucked all responsibility for their wedding. Horses and you'll are have always jobs. up here. So they roped in their family to do their dirty work. I'll just, I'll just leave it up to you. We just stay here. Can Calamity Jane stop this wedding from being put out to pasture? No electricity. Or is it off to the glue factory? I think you've got another pressing priority. Shall I get a horse whip to this couple? Exactly why am I responsible for all the issues when you're the one that invited over That's 100 people? That's because you are the maid of honor. Huh. It automatically puts you in charge. Uh-huh. Sounds like a certain little princess bride is, well, a little princessy. Oh, there's too many voices on each side of my head. I get worked up over very small things. But Becky's groom, Scott, <laughs> he's almost flatlining. I'm feeling OK. I'm good. <laughs> he hasn't gotten a suit yet, and the guys, his groomsmen, haven't gotten suits yet. and. I think it's a big deal, and he doesn't. We really have, like, I don't know, in and around 10 days. But Monday to Friday don't, doesn't count. And why, you may ask, do Monday to Friday not count? Just ask Mr. and Mrs. Ed. We go up to the farm five days a week, and then up there on the weekends. All our uh, free time is spent with the horses. I feel like I don't have any time to plan the wedding. <laughs> well, that's what happens when your first love has four legs. So it's her sister, Sarah, who's doing all the legwork. My sister, Sarah, is my biggest helper. As soon as I found out they were getting married, I was right on top of things that night, looking at dresses, figuring out locations, making phone calls. I call her and I say, I need this done, and she does it. I don't think that they were aware that they uh, couldn't do it on their own. I think it was sort of a, we love each other, we want to get married, it's going to be perfect. But they didn't think about it all the time. It would take all the planning it would take. And it only got worse when they corralled more and more guests. We, we were supposed to have a small wedding at the beginning, so like 50, 60 people, and then we'd sort of doubled that. So because those folks needed some watering and feeding, they needed a bigger barn, a reception hall. Uh -oh. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> it seems like Grandma's apartment. Did you look at the carpet? What happened over here? <laughs> Ew. Are these the chairs? We need chair covers. Because like, it looks like something threw up on this one. But Becky swallows it and describes her hallucination, or rather, vision. I want people to walk in, and they're not going to see any of the negative aspects of the room. I want Christmas fresh greenery going around the ceilings. I want green. lights. There's going to be white lights. I want shimmery Christmas decorations. And I'd love it to appear as though it had snowed. And I want a rainbow, and a pot of gold, and sparkly unicorns playing in the snow. So it's going to snow indoors. This is the impression that we're going to give people. And they're going to think that they're walking into like a winter wonderland. I'll, I'll just, just leave it up to you. We just, yeah. I can't handle any more stress. It's a big issue. I'm a bride. I have other uh -huh. things to worry oh, about. Okay. What, what are the other things you have to worry about? My dress. Your dress. I have to decorate this and you have your dress. <laughs> I don't need the stress, so I'm leaving it to you and you can deal with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, princess. That's fine. Oh. oh. I've been trying to help them out with this wedding, but it's getting to the point now, it's clear they cannot do it on their own. They absolutely need professional help. And a wedding planner. Luckily, fairy godmother Jane Deus Hinch is here to grant this couple three wishes to bring peace to this village. Hello. Hi. Here we are at Pioneer Village. <laughs> yes, isn't it lovely? And did we mention Pioneer? So not a lot of transportation options. All the guests are walking down here then. You ever got any elderly people? My Nana, for one, Uncle Floyd. Uncle, well, they're not going to thank you for this walk, then, no. are they? Hmm, wonder if Uncle Floyd will like this one. No electricity? It's all lit by candles. How romantic and potentially hazardous. But Becky moves on to other burning questions. Now we're almost at the wedding, and we don't, we don't have one decoration. That's a big fear of mine, because I really want my guests to walk in and just be wowed by it. You two didn't think you needed help? <laughs> we just figured, well, it'll just, it'll happen. Just Why do people do that? <laughs> Wouldn't you be disappointed on the day if it doesn't all go well? I love this, but I want to make it work. This wedding, to me, there's still a lot more to do, but I need to go and put a plan together for you. That's why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> so glad I am. So Jane leads her couple to the board and works on getting them to drink in her message. 
<laughs> oh, my. <laughs> oh, dear. Everything with a red line underneath means that's now. We can't do anything Monday through Friday. Not a thing. And why can't you do anything Monday through to Friday? Yeah. We still have to go out and ride our horses right now, right? I think you've got another pressing priority. <laughs> I agree. Some people are obsessed with their hobbies. They are with their horses. I need to get them obsessed with this wedding. So there's a lot of things now to pull the ceremony together. Who's going to do that? Sarah can start working on the booklet. Getting the guests there. Sarah would be great at that one. Decorations. Sarah is very organized. Well, 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 talk about beating a dead horse. Is there anything I've missed? Sarah, <laughs> my potential budding wedding planner. <laughs> I am a fairy godmother. And I can give you three wishes. Do I give them to you or Sarah? Please me. <laughs> Choose them wisely. Thank you. To make this Christmas-themed wedding come together, you got some work to do. I leave it in your hands. I'm not the horse whisperer. I'm the wedding whisperer. Get off your high horse. I think you need to be serious and really think about this. Seriously? But apparently, Northern Dancer and my friend Flicka need them more. Yeah, this is your binder. You have this. So with eight days to go, the wedding committee reconvenes, and it's four legs short. Oh, I wish Becky was here. Becky and Scott are gone to do something with... Horses? If I hear horses mentioned one more time, <laughs> shall I get a horse whip to this couple? Today, with only seven days to the wedding, Becky's mom and sister are trying to get through. Oh, there's too many voices on each side of my head. Well, Sybil, that's what happens when you let other people plan your life. I, I probably can't handle any more stress. I'm up to here. In the meantime, she's also, you know, going to work every day and, you know, leaving early in the morning, getting home later at night and trying to take care of the horses at the same time. Horses? Did someone say horses? Clippity cloppity. Becky, Becky, back to the stables. Okay, sure. but I'm worried because I want everything to go perfectly for you. I know, and, that's and I why appreciate I do it. it. Sarah's very bossy, and I think she's proud that she's bossy because she gets things done. Well, since you're back in the saddle faster than you can say, whoa, Nelly, someone has to take the reins to dress up this donkey okay. of a hall. I think we should decorate this wall and then we'll have Becky take a look at it. We can do it. Can I arrange them after? Oh, he'll pull the corner Actually, that would look really good. Whoa, 10. Yeah. Actually, go. Go center. Becky's going to love this. Mm-hmm. Well, hopefully she'll be wearing blinders. That's Christmas morning Perfect. right there. I just hope it's not cheesy. No, not at all. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Close your eyes, guys. Keep them closed. Open. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you're kidding yeah, me. It's not good. What? You don't like them? Oh, oh you guys are cute, but... <laughs> no. What's wrong with it? It's ugly! It's, it's pretty bad. <laughs> I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little flaccid. Uh-oh, looks like this happy decorating committee has just lost its Christmas cheer. Does this resemble anything of what we said we wanted? You said Christmas. I gave you Christmas. I okay. thought that I had been specific. Well, if you no. showed up once in a while to help us out, you might know. I appreciate that you worked hard, and I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm just being honest. I think Becky was a little harsh. I think Sarah had her best intentions at heart. Oh, my uh, goodness. We're in trouble. So who are you gonna call? Oh my God. Santa Buster, AKA Jane Day is hinged to fight the Hello. Christmas cheese. Hi Jane, it's Becky. Um, we have a big problem. I need you to help the decorating committee pull this all together because they just have absolutely no clue what's going on. Yes, Jane, there is a Santa Claus and he's flammable. Thank goodness he got here quick. This is, um, this is uh... another thing that they've suggested. <laughs> Well, we don't have inflatable Santas at weddings. That's not elegant, is it? This is what they've come up with. Um, we suggested Winter Wonderland, and... Uh... They gave us Christmas in Vegas. <laughs> I don't even think Christmas in Vegas would look this bad. I don't think it's what you pictured, is it? <laughs> no, not at all. This is such a hard room to decorate. I think you're on one page, and I think we're on another. I think you're thinking Christmas. And I think you're thinking Winter Wonderland, yes. which is big ones of these. To make this look your Christmas Wonderland is a huge task. 
You'll have to trust me with this one, Becca. I'm, I'm your fairy godmother, and I will do this to make this come true. Winter Wonderland? A bit more like Winter Blunderland. So Jane rides off into the sunset to figure this one out. But today, Scott is off his steed to suit up the studs. I don't know why she's giving me such a hard time. I think it's a big deal because I'm worried that we're going to end up not having them, that it's not going to get ordered in time. So we'll just try a jacket on you to start. <laughs> That's your size right there. That was, that was easy. That was my only job, so no worries from here in for me. Gee, thanks, Sporto. You're a big help. Well, at least today, with five days to go, Becky and her fillies are also in dressage. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, this is going to... I love my dress. Mm. Oh, beautiful. But then the hen party comes to an end when it's mom's turn to strut her feathers. I am really nervous. I had some surgeries and I've gained a lot of weight, and I'm really not sure that it's going to fit the way it should. I definitely don't want frumpy. It's OK. I mean, I like the color and I like the style. I don't particularly like how I look in it. And so later that day, Sarah discovers there's more to why mom is feeling so glum. I don't mind the fact that I'm getting older. That doesn't bother me at all. I just don't like that I've kind of lost the shape of my face and all the weight that I've gained. You always tell me that I'm beautiful. And then the next thing that people say is, you look just like your mom. I don't know. I wanted to cry when I heard my mom say how she felt about herself and pictures. I had no idea that it was that bad. But I really am not comfortable having my picture taken. You know that. I know. Today, with the wedding four days away, Sarah talks to Becky about bucking up their mom. The picture thing. For oh, the I know, the whole picture thing. It's really, really bothering her. I just, I didn't know it was that bad. I didn't know she was so worried about it. I think it's a pretty big issue. Yeah, actually, you know, mom's a big part of the wedding and she's put a lot into it. And, I agree. I agree. You know, I think it's like. No, I want her to be happy because I'm not going to enjoy the day if I if think she's that not she's happy. not happy. You, I think that we should use one of the wishes. Okay. Hi, Jane, it's Becky. I need to cash in a wish. What I've got planned, I hope Mary likes. Oh, please. But Jane can't quite snap to it yet because first, she's got to conquer okay. Tinseltown. I wanted to introduce to you my very good friend, Brian Jackson, who is my visual stylist. I thought Brian was the best person to create this vision I have of this winter wonderland. I come here all the time for events, and there is more than enough stuff here to make a wonderful winter wonderland. So I'm thinking snowflakes and icicles, silvery glittery. Off you go into the Emporium and see what you can find. Beautiful. What do you think? Oh, are there any with silver? I don't think there were. Oh, what a shame. Perfect for the head table. This is getting worse by the minute. No, we have nut allergies. Oh. But Jane can't handle the merry band of tacky taste for one more twinkle. You see this snow effect? Mm -hmm. I like that. This is nice. I like this. The snowflakes? Yeah. Oh, this is looking a bit more promising. Where's the decorating committee gone? Sarah? Brian and I have had a look, good look around. We're thinking more this. You see what I'm saying? It's more sparkly, glittery, icy. Finally, everyone's feeling the love. But Jane has one more vision that she's just not seeing properly. Can we enlist any more people into the committee? Well, that's sure. what we were going to ask about. You want to hire somebody or, I you know, I think we might have to. So, so. Um, I might be able to call a couple of people that I've worked with. Yeah, that would be, because we've been trying to think of people and it's just. So with that decorating disaster averted, attention has shifted back to final preparations. Nah, we don't mean by Becky or Scott, by Sarah, of course. I'm making a bridal bag for Becky. And good old mom's got her back too. She has a lot on her place, so we're all pitching in trying to help out a little bit. Great. There you Thank go. you. Becky is probably as close to the edge as I've ever seen her right now. Oh, really? <laughs> but today, with only three days to the wedding, Jane's attention is focused on getting Becky's mom to feel like a thoroughbred. Becky rang me. She knows that you are nervous about doing the photographs. Definitely. It could be that Mary turns on a heel and walks out. 
I have to work my magic. No, what I think would be fabulous. I would always love to do a makeover. Oh! <laughs> and then we're going to do a photo shoot. Oh, my goodness. I'm a photographer. So oh. it's me that's going to be taking the photos. Oh, that's amazing. And so Jane works on releasing the inner Mary Marvelous. Now, one thing I noticed is that you've got a lot of hair at the back. Yes, I do. So what I'm thinking is taking that out mm -hmm. and tapering it more into here. Sure. So all your strong features, she's going to enhance them. So once you put your foundation on, mm -hmm. you use something slightly lighter and you draw on, you know, you think, oh, I need a bit there and a bit there. Mm -hmm. Mary, looking fabulous. I love it. Yeah? I absolutely love it. All right, Foxy Mama, time to focus on the big issue. The best way to face your fear is to fight it head on. And that's what I'm going to do with Mary. I'm going to point that camera at Mary. Here's a couple of hints and tips. Never be square on. Mm -hmm. Especially quiet. Lead with the shoulder. So you're going into the camera. Always think tall. One thing I find on photographs is everybody's faffing about with their fingers. You can always hold his arm, or we can have a purse. It's down. It's suddenly an accessory. And never feel stiff. Okay. If anything is stiff, it'll come across as stiff. Now you relax, now you're happy. That's fantastic. Oh, you look beautiful. Isn't that fabulous? Oh, way different. <laughs> I do. See? You yes. see the difference? Look at that. Exactly. Look at that. Yeah. There's a halo there. Mary was transformed. I mean, it's a Cinderella moment. Thank you so much. Oh, I okay. can't believe it. And I'll be there on the day. Good. <laughs> Going you take the pictures. Shoulder. Yes. Shoulder to oh. camera, stands. I don't know what we would have done without you, Jane. I think Jane is just fantastic. I mean, I feel so much better about the wedding now. I feel so much more confident. No crying, because it'll ruin the makeup. I don't know whether I can promise that. <laughs> waterproof mascara for Thank all you. of us. <laughs> yeah, waterproof is a good idea. But what do you got in snow and sleep proof? Hmm, Uncle Floyd sure isn't going to like walking in this at the wedding tomorrow. Hi Jane, it's Becky. We're standing outside the chapel right now and it's freezing cold and there's snow on the ground. I think we need to cash in another wish. What happens when a bride and a groom are more interested in their horses than in their wedding? I don't need the stress, so I'm leaving it to you and you can deal with it. Jane Day as Hinch gave them three wishes to stop their wedding from bucking out of control. For wish one, she was asked to turn a hall of horrors into a winter wonderland. You see this snow effect? I like that. For wish two, she snapped the mother of the bride out of her insecurities. I felt so much more relaxed. And for wish three, Becky called in Jane to help her battle the elements. The couple have realized now how important it is to get their guests from the foyer right the way up to the chapel. So yesterday, with one day to go, Jane put the cart before the horse and went right to the source. I'm going to meet with Morella. She's the event coordinator here. And I need to ask her if I can bring in some form of transportation. We offer a wagon. It's a horse-drawn replica wagon yeah. from the 1840s. Perfect. So you already have something. What a shame. I think it's it's a wasted wish because if they'd have just asked the question, they'd have had the transport. So Jane and Morella bundle up to see if this chariot is truly fit for a princess. So that's our wagon, Jane. It's a bit basic. Would you like a ride? I'd love a ride. Giddy up. Hey, it worked. Yes, we've got the transport, but it's basic. We have to bring in throws, some cushions, decorate it up so that the guests will enjoy their transport in the snow. I need a cup of tea to come up with any thoughts. My brain is frozen. Today's the wedding day, and while Jane gets the wheels rolling, Princess Becky sits back and lets her royal subject, Sarah, do the sweating. Sarah, why do you look so worried? <laughs> no, it's not everything to be done. Well, I'm pretty calm, and I'm the bride. I know, you're great. That's good. <laughs> hmm, so what else is new? 
But Jane isn't riding the calm because after seeing this somewhat ugly buggy, she yearns to make this wagon wonderful. I'm going to wait for a break in the snow, hopefully, and then we've got to go and decorate the buggy. There's a buggy. And back at the Okie Dokie Corral, the Colts are starting to whinny. I really don't know. I'm at a loss here. It's got duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Brian whips the horse wagon into shape. And faster than you can say, Little House on the Prairie, Jane gets into the pioneer spirit. Then Becky and her team of fillies arrive for their magical ride. Are the horses OK? Dunno, Becky. Why don't you ask them? In fact, why don't you just marry them? Thank you. The buggy? With all the throws and the decoration, it all added to the wedding. It was absolutely perfect. And then we got to incorporate horses into our wedding. And finally, the moment is here for this filly and her steadfast fiance to tie the knot. Scott, will you give yourself to Becky to be her husband, to love her, comfort her, honor and protect her, so long as you both shall live? I will. It's Becky. <laughs> Will you give yourself to Scott to be his wife? To love him, honor him, comfort him, and protect him. Sorry. All right. <laughs> well, she already said yes. So. <laughs> Have you been practicing at home? Yeah. <laughs> I, Scott, take you, Becky, to be my wife. I, Becky, take you, Scott, to be my husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. To love and to cherish for the rest of our lives. According to God's holy law, this is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. I do declare that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I present to you Becky and Scott, husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> The wedding was magical, all in candlelight. Nobody noticed the cold. Becky and Scott just had eyes for each other. And as the paparazzi pounds, Jane makes sure everyone's working it, especially Mom. Everybody big smiles. Yes? I remember leaning forward into the camera. Mom was great in the picture. She was yeah. all leaning into it. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. She was good. Mary, wish granted? Yes. More than granted. And then it's the moment they've both been waiting for, a chance to see the magical hall. Oh my gosh. <gasps> oh, it's spectacular. Oh my gosh. To see it now, fully lit, with the falling snowflakes, this is magical. Everything's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, We're just so happy. It's yeah. everything we, we wanted. Yeah, there's not a candy cane in sight. There's not a Christmas stocking. It's not an inflatable Santa, but is this Christmas or is yes. this Christmas? Yes. Jane Jane's is awesome. unbelievable. Yeah. Like, I'm going to miss her so much. Becky, Scott, was this your wish granted? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. Isn't it? Oh, my God. Becky has had a smile fixed on her face. She has loved every minute. Can we share them what you found? He thinks this is his friend. Is that another little jitsu? It's a lion. Oh, he's nice. He's nice. So they've had enough, babes. No more silly outfits. No more. No more. You ready? 